Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, the host, where I'm at episode 52 now, here to try to educate minds one tailpipe at a time, because that's my motto. So I've got a kind of quick, just update show today, um, go through a little bit of manufacturer news, but let me start by talking about Canada and our Cross Canada electric charging infrastructure. So that's something that we don't have today. We can't really drive coast to coast. You can, but not with level three. You'd have to make some level two, some overnight stops, things like that to do that. And uh, in fact, I have an upcoming show where I'll be highlighting that a little bit more in detail, but I don't want to spoil that right now. Well, it seems that our Canadian government that's currently in power right now are, are federal liberals are continuing to invest in EV infrastructure. Of course, I've talked about the federal incentive program that's out there now for buying a, a, a new EV. Uh, but they've announced another $4.6 million Canadian to be part uh, of an investment for, for Petro-Canada. And I talked about Petro-Canada on a previous show. They're one of our national gas retailers across Canada. And they're investing in that organization to be able to deploy 92 new electric vehicle fast chargers as part of their coast-to-coast -coast coverage. Now, there's uh, you've seen me testing the uh, some of the review cars that I've taken over to the Milton station here just outside Toronto in Ontario, but the actual first online station that will be, uh, I, I, I believe, will be chargeable, that you'll be paying for, will be in, um, if I've got that right, Stuiaki, Nova Scotia. I don't know where that is, but I love Nova Scotia. I've been there many times. And it'll be part, of course, of a bigger network of more than 50 fast charging locations with two charging units at each location. So it'll be two uh, EVSEs, most likely with a CCS and a Chatamo uh, connector. And uh, I know the one in Milton has both a 200 kilowatt CCS and 100 kilowatt Chatamo in one station, and then 50 and 100, I believe, in the other. Something along those lines. So this is part of Ottawa's uh, total 100, almost $183 million investment to create seamless coast-to-coast -coast charging for electric vehicles uh, of all different models. So already there's over 500 fast charging stations are finished or and or planned uh, to be built uh, in the remaining part of 2019 and into 2020. And then they're saying hundreds more over the next two years. So that's great to hear for us Canadians. Now, a little word of caution, even though there's money out there that uh, organizations are tapping into, if we do have a federal government change this fall, we do have a national election this year, that could change the funding um, accessibility. So let me say that sometimes these programs could get canceled or could get changed or modified. Or, so it's not 100% for sure that this is going to remain intact. So hopefully uh, organizations are tapping into this so that they can start building more uh, fast charging infrastructure across Canada because it is a beautiful drive. I've done the cross Canada drive a couple times myself and it's wonderful. So stay tuned for more info. Switching gears to talk a little bit about Jaguar. Now, Jaguar and Land Rover are, uh, I've got a press release uh, about a week or so ago from them that they are announcing that they want to accelerate their electrification plans. I believe I might have mentioned this before in some previous shows, so it's not a secret that they're doing that. Um, there's a couple of good points to take out of this information. So um, they're, they're, they want to build all their electrified vehicles in the UK, and that's good because there was talk about losing some jobs in the, you know, thousands of jobs from some of the Jaguar Land Rover, Land Rover plants in the UK are now going to be um, uh, stayed basically in there and moved over to supporting the electrified ramp up of vehicles. And the, the first vehicle that was confirmed to be the next generation all electric Jaguar XJ. XJ has a, has a great history and it's great to see that they're going to electrify that vehicle. Um, it, UK electric vehicle production is really the next step in a Jaguar Land Rover's strategy. They've basically said they're going all in on electrification. That's really where they're pinning the future of the organizations um, on. And um, this is really a significant step in delivering on the company's commitment to expand electrified options for uh, both Jaguar, new Jaguar and a Land Rover model starting from 2020 onwards. So yes, you will see Land Rover models in a full electrified version at some point in the next decade, which is only next year. So it sounds like a long way away, but it's not. 
Now, one of the other keys to hopefully success for Jaguar Land Rover is the battery assembly uh, and a lot of the parts that they're doing. Now, they're trying to in-house and in-country as much of the manufacturing process and part supply chain as possible. And this includes a new battery assembly center at Hams Hall, which will go online in 2020. And the capacity for that will be up to 150,000 units a year, at least to start. They don't say what the expansion plans are. Now, they also have a engine manufacturing center in Wolverhampton, which is home to currently to uh, Jaguar Land Rover's global EDU production. And these facilities will be uh, bringing out electrified versions of the powertrains and so forth. So it's all great news. Um, you know, obviously, I think with the concerns of Brexit and some of the economic um, standpoint and tariffs and all this stuff that's happening around the world, it's a smart move for Jaguar to try to in-house and in-country that uh, supply chain as much as possible. So they are trying to bring everything into the UK or as close to production facilities as possible. So good luck on Jaguar. Um, you know, you all saw my feedback on the iPace. I thought it was a tremendous, tremendous vehicle. You know, you people kind of bash it a little bit for inefficiencies and, you know, big, big front grill and all this kind of stuff. But get behind the wheel of one for a week and spend a week with it. You will fall in love, folks. Trust me. Trust me. It's a fantastic car now. It's not cheap, but you know, that's that's the Jaguar name. So all the best to them. Keep on the lookout for more announcement as they as they uh, spin up for uh, you know, for bringing online more models in the next uh, couple of years. Been a lot of news from VW. I did an audio podcast uh, about a few weeks ago from some folks here in Canada, some top folks talking about their plans and a little bit of nuggets of information that was leaked out of that audio podcast. If you haven't listened to it, go listen to it. I don't want to spoil it here. Um, it's a great, great conversation I had with VW, but more information coming out about the ID3. If, but they are uh, playing the smart move as well. As I mentioned, Jaguar trying to in-house and in-country a lot. Well, Vol Volkswagen's doing the same thing, trying to in-company a lot of that. They have a uh, group of companies that make components called Volkswagen Group Components. This is a global organization as part of the Vol Volkswagen Group, and they are spooling up and gearing up many, many production levels for parts for the ID platform, including the ID3 and the MEB um, chassis and platform that, that those are based on. So they've already started uh, pre-series MEB platform parts uh, being uh, at several locations and where, and where all these parts will come into the VW plant in Zwickau, Germany, where the ID3 and derivatives will be produced to start. They will be moving to some North American assembly in the next couple of years. I mentioned Chattanooga, Tennessee as one location in the uh, North America. So uh, things like electric drive units are going to be produced at the Castle plant uh, and they're, they're targeting up to 500,000 drive units a year. So these are pretty significant numbers to start. And then another plant in... Um, um, Tianjin, China, will supply an additional 900,000 of these parts for a total of 1.4 million per year from 2023 onwards. So just in about three and a half years, they'll be able to build 1.4, have enough a supply chain for 1.4 million electric drive units. Um, that's a lot of vehicles. Again, Volkswagen has stepped up and said they want to start building a million EVs a year in the not so distant future. Well, in order to do that, you need to have the parts and the supply chain uh, being able to match those type of production numbers. Now, the rotor and stator for the electronic motors are going to be supplied from one of their Salzgitter plants, Gitter plants, excuse me, up to 2,000 per day. You can do the math there on a yearly number. And the MEB systems, for the batteries themselves, are all going to be developed and produced produced starting in the fourth quarter of this year in the Brunswick plant and the, the plant capacity for those are up to 2,000 a day as well. So great news to see, you know, as VW continues to move forward in their electrification plans. And I know a lot of people are saying, oh, gee, you're talking about VW again, more more air, right? More more announcements. Well, again, you know, in order to build vehicles, you got to have all this stuff set up. You got to spin up everything and get all these, you know, mass parts and everything ready so that when it gets to the production line, it all goes in the vehicle and out the door. So you can't build a car without all the subsequent parts and all the supply chain set up in the volumes that Volkswagen wants to do. It's a big task. Now, again, they are a company that can do that because of their mass and scale and the economies of scale that they bring right away into this. Not like Tesla, where they excuse me, they had to build up economies, economies of scale and they continue to do that and that's great. But VW has the ability and the capability and the, the monetary funding because they sell other cars right now, not 
uh, EVs so much. They only have a little bit. So they can take that funding invested into BVs, uh, electric vehicles, and bring up those platforms in a much quicker manner. You know, we're only talking, you know, two to four years to really get into full swing of production. And that's quite a lot. I mean, look, Tesla's been building cars since 2009. We're 10 years into it, where they're really only starting to ramp up into the hundreds of thousands of vehicles now with the success of the Model 3. So it's taken them a while. So VW is trying to get to a million vehicles just in about two or three years, to, let's say two to four years. So they have the capabilities to do that. So Keep watching for more announcements, and I do look forward to the final reveal of the ID3 coming this fall. So Mini Cooper, a week or so, a couple of weeks ago, um, launched their Mini E uh, uh, SE, I guess, the Mini Electric Cooper SE. Uh, fully electric vehicle. So this is a uh, their first really kick at the can at Electrified. They had an E option of the Mini before, which was a two-seater, I believe, but this is going to be a standard type of Mini Cooper with a 32-kilowatt-hour uh, battery pack. Now, before I get into some of the specs, and, you know, I've talked about this car a few times, so I won't spend a lot of time, but when this announcement came out, I was reading some reviews and looking at articles and stuff like that. A lot of people were bashing this thing because of the range, saying it's just 114-mile range. EPA. That's what it's uh, estimated to be, uh, because NEDC or sorry WLTP uh, is in the 165 mile range or something like that. So you know EPA is going to be probably down to to at least 125 anyway, and and 114 seems low. And not sure if that's actually going to be it. Again, these are estimated, so you have to read between the lines. When these headlines come out, people go, "Oh, 114 miles." Geez, well that's what we think it might be. Uh, it seems that a lot of EVs, when you actually get them and you take them on the road, the Kiro, uh, the Kia Nero EV, the Kona, I'm hearing about the e-tron. I'm hearing about other models. I mean, even even the iPace, I thought was a, a little bit better range than I thought it was going to be. These are all coming hitting the streets with range that are higher than even EPA estimates. So, take this with a little bit of grain of salt. However, even if it is 114 miles, I still think that the Mini. Cooper is going to be a great selling vehicle. For one, there's a lot of diehard Mini fans, a lot of people that like that model line. And for European tight congested cities, even here in North America for large urban centers, zipping around in a smaller vehicle like that with 114 miles a day, it's more range than you usually need to get around in urban environments. You know, the average is 30 to 40 miles, 50, 60 kilometers, whatever you want to call it, a day. So that's more than enough for your average uh, driving range. Um, so it should do fine. 0 to 62 or 100 kilometer an hour in about 7.3. That's right in the average line. Um, and again, that range. Now, for some other specs, it's going to support 11 kilowatt maximum uh, capacity for level 1, level 2 charging. So you can get to a full charge in about 3 hours hours they're claiming or 80 percent in two hours and then if you go to a, a dc fast charger uh, it can charge up to 50 kilowatts uh, which is the norm right now for dc fast charging ccs combo and that translates to about 80 percent in about 35 minutes so you know again a little smaller package a little quicker charging time so that if you do road trip or do need to do longer distances you don't have to wait so long and it will have thermal management and all that good stuff that we're used to seeing for for battery systems today um, deliveries are going to start at the beginning of 2020 they might actually even squeeze some out at the end of this year they are taking pre-orders now it's good to see that mini is doing something and uh, if somebody does have a reservation and gets more information on time frames on this send me an email i'd love to or comment i'd love to hear from you and last on the show today is the mg ZS EV. And I'm really stoked about this. Uh, shout out to my friend James and Kate out in the UK. James did a nice little live feed yesterday where he got access to an MG ZS EV for a little bit and did some filming and answered some questions. So thanks, James, for putting that together. It was great to see a little bit more detail on it. Um, but this car is something I'm super excited. I started getting excited when I was in the UK a couple months ago hearing and talking to people about this. But this is something that MG is very, very firm on that they're not, they're not really Really, this isn't a brand statement or a vanity type of gig for them. They're here to sell electric cars, uh, and they want to do it big. And I, you know, if anybody has a chance, I talked about VW earlier. I think these guys do too to do some decent quantities. This car is coming really well equipped, you know, a compact SUV type form factor, which is all the rage these days, as I've said over and over again. Great for um, being family friendly and roominess and affordable. And I think affordability is something I've been hammering down to you folks for a lot. And this really is going to start getting into that realm. And it's great to see the shift in price point because we do need that to happen. 
So it comes out in two versions, the uh, EV Excite and the EV Exclusive. I'm just looking at my specs here. Starting from 21,000, just under 21,500 pounds or 23,800 uh, euros at the time of this article or 26,720 USD and you can convert to your own courtesy. Uh, as much as you want now this is including about seven thousand verse uh, off uh, pounds off of on productions that's a, a car incentive grant in the uk and for the first one thousand buyers they'll get an extra thirty five hundred off of that a promotional price so you can add thirty five hundred to those if you're not in the uk because um, you can just get the grant after that one thousand are purchased or ordered and mg is also going to provide free home charging point and standard installation and that's a great idea most vendors will sell you a charging point now they have deals with flow or charge point or you know tesla has their own products but you know they'll sell and it's and and you have to buy the the charging point and the installation well here mg is going to provide that for free and i take it this is just the uk customers because that's where i'm understanding it's going to come out first um but it really makes it a compelling option because now for for new adopters getting into evs they're going to get the whole package so they don't have to worry because we all know that most of your charging if you have the capability to do so is at home right your home is your, your garage or outside of your garage your home whatever wherever you can put that that charging unit is your gas station so to speak and that's where you're going to do the vast majority so to be able to bundle that and package that in i think is a great idea you can put a 500 pound deposit to get one of the first 1000 they could be gone by now i don't even know if they are or not because uh, this article is a few days old now it's a compelling option again for to get people out of uh, petrol cars and gas cars and again, that's where we're trying to target i'm not trying to convert you folks that already have evs to get into another ev or to get rid of your ev for something else i'm out there trying to talk to people that hey you know an ev could fit your lifestyle and what's your use case what's your needs and look at all the options that are coming out from very expensive to inexpensive now getting into there big to large you know to small all these different variants that are coming out the more choice the better and I think MG is really nailing it with this one to kind of get into, into that. Um, and one of the other things before I get into some more of the specs is they have the scale uh, to be able to deliver 300,000 of these at least to start because uh, they're going to be built in China at a Chinese factory. And they should be able to scale to 300,000, providing they have enough battery cells. And there's a lot of battery cell manufacturers in China. Of course, it's a huge market, so the market's really taking its demand, but they continue to increase capacities and increase production uh, uh, rollouts. So I think that they're going to be safe and to be able to ramp up to those numbers, at least within the first couple of years. Now, and also they're offering a seven year warranty on the vehicle. So, you know, this is again, I, I'm not that familiar with the Chinese market itself in house. I, I don't know what the standard warranties are within China. I don't follow that market because it's huge. It's the biggest market right now in, in globally for EVs. So I don't know if a, sta if a standard seven year warranty across the board is good or bad, but this uh, sounds pretty good to me. It's pretty well in line with mo most battery pack systems that have eight years. Uh, but in this case, both the battery and the car are seven years warranty. So that's nice that they're bundling the, that in because it gives you the vote of confidence, right? Because I don't know the quality. I don't know the quality from some of these Chinese plants or, or plants in you know, some of the car plants in general. So we'll have to wait and see. But for them to stand behind it, and back it up, I think is going to give tremendous consumer confidence. Now, some spe specs on this vehicle, 44 and a half kilowatt hour battery pack, good enough for about 163 miles, 262 kilometers of WLTP. Let's shift that down to EPA. Let's say 125, 130 miles or so of EPA is probably on track which again is a, is a fantastic daily range. There's nothing wrong with that data range and you probably will even get a little bit better than that. 105 kilowatt um, and uh, of power and 353 Newton meters of torque. You could convert that to pound feet and figure that out. Uh, also comes with driver assist suite called MG Pilot and that'll be standard across both of the, the model trim lines. Um, if you watch a bit of James Lies feed or seen some of the other uh, reviews that are already out there for the vehicle, Everybody is very, very surprised by the amount of interior space, including passenger space and storage space in the boot. Um, it, it's deceivingly small from the outside, but you get into this and you're going, wow, like I can fit a six foot two guy in the front, a six foot two guy behind him with still with leg and headroom to spare. And I can probably squeeze three in the back seat. Uh, might be a little thin in the middle, but you can still get five people in there uh, pretty well comfortably for, for rides. So it's, it's deceivingly uh, big uh, in the inside where it doesn't look like it. 
So I talked about the battery pack. This is going to have liquid cool technology, and there's they're using CATL cells. They have a relationship. Okay, and C C you know CATL is a Chinese company, so it makes sense to to keep it in house or in country. Uh, so yeah, 105 kilowatt. Uh, that's 143 horsepower if I've got that correct, and 353 newton meter electric motor, front wheel drive. So no no all wheel drive variant. Not really needed in the UK and in a lot of European countries that are not Nordic. Uh, get away from the Scandinavian countries. Uh, you don't really need all-wheel drive and again I've, I've lived in Canada almost all my life uh, and I've never had an all-wheel drive and I've gone through worse winters than you know I've seen in the last few years I've usually had rear wheel mostly front wheel drive never had an issue getting stuck or anything like that so good tires and proper driving technique and you know and safety concerns when you're driving in big snow you'll have no problems getting through it uh, zero to 100 percent charging in six and a half hours you has a seven kilowatt onboard charger and it does support dc fast charging up to 85 kilowatts so to give you uh zero to 80 in about 43 45 minutes specs so pretty well online with the mainstream specs i encourage you to check it out if somebody has uh, one of these on pre-order love to hear what some of the feedback and communications you're getting from mg from availability because i believe that these are going to start to be delivered this year this fall september october time frame so they are currently wrapping these out they're doing media tours and they're booting around doing tests and letting people starting to review these things so that's great to see that they're out there um, if this looks like a fantastic vehicle i really really wish this comes to north america i don't see it coming right now but let's hope that uh, the north american market because especially in canada that would do really well wouldn't do the numbers that it's going to do in the UK or in Europe, but it would do well by our standards. In the US, so-so, there's still a little bit bigger pickup truck and a little bit larger SUV marketplace, not so much the compact, but I think that times are shifting a little bit um, as oil continues to stay moderately priced here. So, you know, the shift from a US marketplace may be looking to downsize a little bit to more mid to compact size SUVs from the larger. So it could have a really good market space here. I, I'm not 100% sure looks like a great vehicle i think you know from what people are saying not only the interior space but the fit and finish and the quality and the options that are coming with this you know a, a sunroof the moonroof that opens up and tilts and, and slides and all this stuff you know for for something of this price point you know 30k or, or less uh local currency i mean that's pretty awesome in my opinion but that's without any incentives too so this is going to do i think really well um, I'm excited about it. And I hope that uh, some of my friends in the UK will get a chance to actually drive one and uh, do some fuller reviews and as I see more stuff come out. But this is certainly a winner in my eyes. It's, it's really starting to close that gap from an affordability and a, and a use case and, and, and the necessary elements in an EV to make it worth uh, new adopters especially to get into. So keep your eyes on MG and uh, I wish them all the best. All right, that's it for this show, short and sweet. Just a few uh, things to talk about. I've got a, a surprising show that'll be coming up in the next uh, week or so. I don't want to give too much detail away. It's going to be an interesting look at a vehicle that I haven't had a chance to look at yet. So uh, stay tuned for that. But thank you very much for watching this episode 52 of the EV Revolution Show, where educating minds one tailpipe at a time is what I tried to do here. Again, thank you uh, to all who like, support, comment, if you don't like it, that's fine. You know, every show I always get a handful of so uh, of thumbs downs and stuff like that. Whatever, that's fine. It doesn't bother me. I can't please everybody, but I do thank the vast majority of people that uh, write in and tell me uh, that they like what I'm doing and they ask questions and they, they provide additional info, which is great to share with everybody. So thank you for keeping the comment section pretty active. I really appreciate that. Uh, again, uh, thank you. For, I'm humble, always humbled by my Patreon supporters. Uh, if you don't know what that is, go check out uh, the site at Patreon in my link there and uh, you know even a dollar a month will help if you feel that you want to contribute to supporting me to continue my endeavors here that would be much appreciated uh, thank you again for that and for everybody thank you for taking the time to watch my show uh, my contact information and thank yous for patreon support is coming up at the end credits here so you'll get all that please feel free to email me or reach out to me if you have questions comments things you want to share information I get all kinds of stuff coming to me which is great I hear from a lot of people that uh, some of their stories and they're sharing with me on, on their electrified journey so thank you very much for that and until the next show everybody please stay safe and i'll see you next time i'll see you when i see you all right bye-bye